Good morning. We'll call this September 13th, 2021 uh, work session to order. Uh, we are still um, virtually virtual uh, due to the ongoing pandemic as we continue to, to uh, deal with this uh, Delta variant. Well, commissioners, certainly uh, welcome you here this morning. I'm so glad that you're able to be with us. Public comment, clerk, do we have any public comment this morning? Good morning, Chairman. We did not have anybody sign up this morning, okay. um, but I would like to ask if there's anybody that's called in and is holding that would like to speak. Um, and as a reminder, star six will unmute you if you're on your phone and you've muted yourself. Okay, Chairman, turn it okay. back to you. Okay, thank you so much. Board of Commissioners, at your pleasure. We do have a presentation this morning. Actually, we have two. And our first presentation is SPLOS, is a SPLOS update from our own communications uh, director for our SPLOS, Mr. David Good. Mr. David Good, uh, you have the floor for the update. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you, uh, Board of Commissioners, uh, Madam Sudivan, and um, staff, and especially uh, the citizens, are be bringing you uh, the revenue updates for July and work through August. And as the communication team brings up the presentation, I would love for the citizens to know that your tax dollars are definitely going big towards the SPLOS program, uh, so you should be happy and be able to see these changes throughout the county. Uh, next slide, Rick. And as I said, that we're talking about the, um, the, the revenue for July and now projects completed. As you'll see, we had none in August, but thankfully we did have a, a beautiful grand open at 7301 Groupers Lake Road for the, um, for the new Lithia Springs Senior Center. So that is something that we did do in August. So next slide, please. As you see, the, um, the revenue remains strong. Um, it came in in July for $2,744,000. That's a little bit over $666,000 above original projections. Uh, for the entirety of the spots up to July, uh, we are at $116,136,958. That's compared to $105,597.64 um, over with the original projection. And that's a little bit over $10.5 million over the original projections. Uh, next slide, Rick. Um, this chart shows you that in the last, I guess you could say the last uh, four months, at least since the fifth year of SPLOS began, which was on April 1st, we are around $2.7 million. Um, that's how much we're averaging compared to 2.35 million, uh, really 2.3 million at uh, the same time last year. So uh, revenues are really doing good in uh, the fifth year of SPLOS. Uh, next slide, Rick. <clears throat> the first thing that you'll see is that we have the fire truck for the 2020 fire truck. Uh, the cost was 491,000. Uh, we were expecting delivery um, by the 15th of this month, but because there were some, um, some things that the fire chief needed to add to this truck for, um, for different uh, purposes, for the safety of it and all the equipment that's added, um, it'll probably come in near the end of the month, but the fire chief will be able to speak to that if you have questions. Um, for the ambulance, it has been uh, delayed until December 2021, um, just because of issues in getting the parts delivered, but we are expecting to get that at the end of the year. Uh, fire station number four, um, the BOC, uh, the Board of Commission did approve the RFQ for architecture engineering, and we're working on that with staff to get that to procurement. Um, next up, we have uh, SR5 at Douglas Boulevard. Um, the Board of Commissioners, they did approve the task order for one of our on consult um, engineering companies, and we should be, uh, you should be seeing some work being done with that pretty soon. Uh, we have the street lights phase one and phase two. Um, as you know, in phase one are the I-20 um, you know, railways as they connect with our roads across the uh, county. Um, that one is mostly done. The only thing we have left is on um, post road work. Post road, we're waiting for um, a permit from a GDOT, and that's gonna be one that Georgia Power is doing. Uh, we just um, signed a, approved a memorandum of understanding uh, with GDOT utility permit for SR-166 at Cass Ferry Road. And that entire uh, project along SR-166 is the last of uh, phase two. Phase two actually had a lot of different 
intersections and a lot of different parts of the roadways to put up street lights. The SR 166 area is the last of that. Now, next slide, please. Uh, next slide, Rick. Uh, we have now, we have the Lee Road widening. The budget, the budget that you see, uh, the 10 million, that's um, just on SPLOS funds. Um, the, the Board of Commissioners, they approved an agreement with GDOT for the $14,320,000 that's going to be on their side, as well as this um, SEI $888,800, they'll be performing CEI, CEI work. I believe it's already uh, been done up for that one. So the next step is the award of the construction uh, contract. Um, now we have coming up is um, Boundary Waters Activity Center. Um, the, uh, the cost is seven million three hundred nine one thousand three hundred forty eight. Um, the date for the um, for the approval for the elevator is coming up on I believe it's going to be the twenty uh, the twentieth, and then the twenty first is when the fire marshal should have one hundred percent completion. And the target date um, by the contractor is at the end of the month, in, uh, end of September. Uh, when it comes to bill off and fair play, uh, we actually have had a CO uh, done for uh, both buildings at a cost together of $1.5 million. Um, and actually this past weekend, they did um, have games played at fair play. So uh, right now the citizens are enjoying um, the fair play concession as it was in use. Um, the Deer Lake uh, gym roof replacement, that's for $191,400. Um, 100,000 of that is coming from SPLOS. Um, the contractor has ordered materials and expected to start on October 1st. Uh, next slide, Rick. And that is it. And I would like to um, thank Madam Chair for her great write-up on the SPLOS projects um, in the Chapel Hill News and Views and the Villa Rica News and Views back in August. And um, it will open up for questions. And we have Terry Gable here. Uh, to answer any questions. Thank you. I'll turn it back over to you, Madam Chair. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Good. And uh, by the way, happy belated birthday. Thank you. <laughs> any questions from the Board of Commissioners for our uh, communications director, Mr. Good? Madam Chair. Okay. Vice Chairman Robinson, you have a call. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, uh, good morning, David and Terry. A couple of questions, and thank you for the presentation. First, I want to say um, to to staff and to our contractors and, and those who provide oversight for this plus, it, um, it's been a success. It's been an absolute success. Um, taxpayers, um, our citizens, our family um, experiencing their tax dollars on a daily basis and Every now and then we have to step back and look at like, okay, but look at the work that's been done. I know sometimes we get caught up in the weeds and stuff, but every now and then you gotta look at the work that was done. It, it, it's fantastic. I mean, citizens can see it. I mean, you think about lights, I mean, it's things, people may, they may marginalize that, um, and, and, well, some, but others are like, okay, now our, our county is something we've become proud of. You know, we, we, as the civil servants and the electors, we, we should be proud of the service delivery that we're providing. That like, no, this, and we're, we're, we're being faithful over those dollars that, that were presented. I appreciate this form in which um, obviously consistently we've shared and been transparent about where those dollars are going. And while, um, while it, it, it may be long, it matters, right? It's, it's strategic, it's intentional. And um, again, one more time, the, the citizens can see, okay, I, I, I actually can see it. Sometimes um, the spend, as we call it, uh, gets in, it becomes internal mostly. And citizens really can't appreciate it and they get removed from their government. Um, even though there may be some internal things that, that are being optimized and cleaned up, every now and then they wanna see something like, okay, but what's in it for me? And they can get be selfish. It's their tax dollars. And so every now and then I have to give acknowledgement for the work that's been done. So thank you for that. I just had to acknowledge that it, good work. Um, you can see it, we're coming to the end of this blast. Obviously what, we, what um, David, we're about what, six months, six months plus one, uh, where the bond will be paid off um, in the fifth year of April of 2022, you, yes. uh, which, is, which is solid, rolling. You know, we're coming in under budget. We've got some excess in essence, which brings me as a perfect segue. David, go back and I just got two questions and I'll yield to my peers. 
As it relates to the excess, remind me where we are today again. Did you say 10 million? Can you clarify? Uh, yes, 10.5 million, a little bit over 10.5 million. All right. And now, I want the citizens to realize that's seven, that'll be 72.26% of that goes to Douglas County. The rest of that percentage goes to the cities. That's within Douglas County. Well, that's my question. All right, so roughly about 7 million is some change. Um, comes to the colony proper, less, you know, the, the, the spread for um, our, our respective cities. Correct. So it has, and, and this is a broad question, don't answer if you don't know, is where is the plan for, for the excess? Now, I'm, I'm going to reemphasize my single view of everything. And it really shouldn't take this long. Um, but I'd like to know where is the reforecast of the SPLOS? And I plan to bring up least um, the transportation director Valentin put, put that on our agenda tomorrow uh, to, to bring up where are we at, right? So if you're telling me that we're this far along and we've got this amount of excess, that means you've known how much you spent so far. We have a pre existing list, right? Things on the list, things that were added to the list, whatever. Where do we stand, right? I mean, think about it. that's 10 million guys, at least 7 million to us. Right. And it's 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 you got to be faithful over it. It just can't sit out there. And this is important. I need I need the new leadership to hear this. One thing I really resented back when when, when I, I came in office was back in 2002. They had excess money laid over. Right. It, it wasn't until we paid off the 2009 bond. We started building that football field out there at, at Boundary Wood. Like, OK, y'all got money sitting here. I mean, you had pot, man, I'm sure you remember when you first came on, they got pockets of money just sitting here. And you're re-upping for a new sploss and you ain't spent what you currently got. Y'all need to hear that, right? So you, you need to double time on that. I, I appreciate um, the efforts, but um, I'm also, I've got to advocate on behalf of the citizens. Like, okay, I get you on a re-up. You got 7 million in excess. Where's your programming regarding that? Right. There needs to be some attention. So um, I believe that um, I'll respectfully ask my peers who are chairmen of each of those SPLOS categories to perhaps look at your list, maybe help staff. Um, they seem to be stuck for some reason um, and giving us what we need. And I think obviously we have the authority within our, each of our categories to reshape that, but it's time for us to recalibrate that. Okay, the bond's about to be paid off. Are you going to go to the citizens next year for a referendum and you ain't, you, seven million? Come on, guys. We, we don't want to be slothful over this. I mean, I mean, let's not let up at the end. In other words, we're doing so well, so well, but this one thing, finish it, right? Well, you want to give it back? You give it back? You always have that option, right? Right, so I, I don't, don't, don't take that excess for granted, right? We didn't plan for it. Obviously, the, the, you know, obviously the, the morphine drip from Congress um, obviously has helped this. We know people staying home, we get all that. So it was an unexpected upside for those who can hear. Unexpected upside, got it. But you gotta be in the moment to get your minds around it. So you've got a dedicated team there. Um, obviously the list is long. We're always talking about, we got $10 of, of need and $1, but okay, well, you got three extra dollars, which are seven extra dollars, what you gonna do with it? Right, knock the list down. So that, that was the first thing. Uh, and the last thing I wanna bring up, you, you guys get my point. Uh, um, I'm like, hold on, um, I, I, hold on, no, no, don't, don't respond. I, I just want to make a point. It's okay. It, it's not for yours to defend. I, I'm just making a point. I, I, I need y'all to hear this. And, and to my board, I mean, obviously we're looking to staff to do this work. We always talk about people who does what. Well, they own this, right? So they, they need to be coming to us. I mean, I shouldn't have to roll up my sleeve and do a spreadsheet, but I will. Because I know if we get behind on this thing and now we got a shotgun this and we don't have any encumbrances, then that, that's just not good. So I just want to make the point. I got to keep going, Dave, because we got to, you know, want to make room for everybody else. Uh, my last point is, is more um, specific to District 2, the activity center. Um, it sounds like it's, it's, it's moving. Uh, no problem with the date. Um, sounds like the, the elevator's the last checkpoint that you guys are getting. So uh, I just want to confirm for the record that we do anticipate that it will be completed by the end of what, September and perhaps sometime in October. We'll, perhaps we'll have a ribbon cutting. Is that what y'all are estimating at this point or is it still 30 days beyond that date? All right, um, as I, I would like to have um, you know, any uh, ribbon cutting to be 30 days after the building is, um, is complete. 
but it's supposed to be completed by the end of September after the fire marshal approves on the 21st. If all goes according to plan with that, then we're looking at a uh, ribbon cutting sometime in October. All right. Make, make sure you, 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 you run that up through the um, chairman of uh, Parks and Rec. Just make sure we're all on the same page. But whenever you guys call it, that'll be fine. Uh, that's all I need right now. Again, I don't want to go long. Madam Chair, thank you for the floor. I yield back. Any other questions from the board or comments or remarks? I, I do see our county administrator hand. County administrator, you want to add or? Thank you, Madam Chair. <clears throat> um, I just wanted to reassure the board and the public that we the spouse reef forecast that we presented at the retreat was going to be refined in committee. And so each of the committees will be looking at the percentage of the projection that we think is going to be in excess of the original and bringing recommendations back to this board for approval. But, um, but this issue, since um, this, the question was asked, I just wanted to remind you and let you know that this is a work in progress. Thank you. I yield back. Okay, thank you so much, County Administrator. Any other uh, board commissioners, you, you, do you have any remarks? If you don't, we'll, we'll move on. Thank you so much, uh, Communications Director David Good. You, you look like you were trying to say something earlier. I want to make sure I give you the opportunity to, or I want to make sure I respect your, the moment and give you an opportunity to speak. You have um, no, I, I just saw uh, County Administrator's hand up, so I knew that she might want to respond to what we're discussing. So I just was giving her that opportunity, but thank you for the recognition. Okay, thank you. All right, board commission, certainly I got out of the gate a little early this uh, at the beginning of our meeting and did not acknowledge your presence and, and certainly for the purposes of the record. And I'll just verify for you because you verified prior to us coming, uh, going live this morning. We do have with us this morning, our vice chairman of the, and district two commissioner, Kelly Robinson. Also, we have our District 3 Commissioner, Terenia Carthen, on the line with us. We do have our District uh, 1 Commissioner, Henry Mitchell III. And then also we have District uh, 4 Commissioner, Ann jones Skyder, and then myself. Uh, so we do have a quorum. So I apologize for that, Board of Commissioners. That yeah, was my dad's birthday, so I, I'm just I'm on a different path this morning, thinking about his potential. If he had a live, he would have been 89 years old today. All right, Board of Commissioners, we have uh, another, our second presentation is Town Green, uh, about the Town Green, and we have uh, Marsha Hampton here uh, from uh, Douglasville uh, City, and she's our city manager. Uh, are you on the line, uh, Ms. Hampton? I am, Madam Chair. Okay, you have the floor, and good morning. Good morning. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, um, members of the Board of uh, Commissioners, for this opportunity to be able to present to you. And thank you, um, Ms. Subedam, for giving me an opportunity. Um, I will speak today on the town green, but I, I'll give a little bit of an overview. And I think my presentation um, is very timely. I, I had no idea about um, Commissioner Robinson's comments, nor um, Mr. Good's presentation. But I will talk to you a little bit about SPLOS, because every project that I have uh, that I will present before you um, is funded in whole or in part um, by our SPLOS program. Um, and just so you know how uh, we operate on our SPLOS program and actually projects throughout the city uh, each year since Mayor Robinson, who I believe is, is part of this meeting as well as some of our uh, city council members are here as well, that they set, uh, they set 10 to 15 goals each year that staff is in charge of completing. And those 10 to 15 goals are um, either set forth by operational needs for the city, uh, community initiated projects, or uh, they're part of one of the 17 functional plans that we have for the city relating to internal operations, external operations, and future goals for the city. Um, next slide, please, Rick. Um, just to kind of remind uh, everyone, our portion of the SPLOS is an estimated uh, $38 million. Uh, we bonded out $20 million um, in the beginning of the SPLOS program because we had several uh, shovel-ready projects, and those included um, a huge amount in transportation, which 45% of our SPLOS program goes to transportation. Uh, the photo that you see in front of you is a Mill Village project. 
Um, Mill Village is a small park that's near a church and near the, near the Mill Village. And the reason why this project is important is because it's a catalytic project that's adjacent to the former old mill, which the city owns. Um, it's part of our downtown master plan and all of our plans are listed on the city's website. And it was one of those areas that we felt was important to create an anchor for the east side of downtown. So the park was completed. Um, the park was completed for a little over half a million dollars, and that was paid for and funded uh, wholly by uh, the SPLOSS program. Next slide. Our next park that you're going to see as a part of this is Willing Workers. We're currently under construction for Willing Workers. Uh, years ago, um, a small group, the Willing Workers, uh, the park was originally known as Keith Park for some of you who've been around for a while. Um, the community came to the city about expanding the park. So originally there were basketball goals, uh, goals and courts near uh, Mill Village Park and re -relo we're relocating those to Mill Village. The importance of this park is because this is gonna become a more expansive park and a trailhead for our trail system that eventually will connect the trails along the new Highway 92 route that will lead you to Paulding County and eventually Silver Comet Trail, as well as the trail system on the north side, on the south side, I should say, that will eventually lead uh, to Sweetwater. So we're funding a portion of the trail system via our SPLOS program through transportation. And we're hoping if we have um, another SPLOS and the voters uh, entrust us in that, we will include the entire trail system as part of the new SPLOS program for 2022. And as you can see, that park uh, is an estimated uh, two million dollars and we should complete it over the next couple of months next slide the final park uh, you'll see um, we do have a municipal election this year we have a geo bond referendum um, on uh, this is an estimated 1.5 million that we've completed for design out of our SPLOS program. What you'll see and the voters will see on the geo bond referendum is the $25 million geo bond to construct um, and renovate Jesse Davis Park. It will include a, a zero entry pool, a splash pad, a senior facility, um, an expanded gym and expanding expanded parking. The reason this is important is because now that Highway 92 has been relocated, this will serve as the north anchor for downtown and create a connectivity into downtown that we didn't really have before on the north side. It will be our north anchor park. So we're hopeful that the voters um, will um, consider that geo bond to allow for us to do the necessary renovations for Jesse Davis Park and to make certain that we are able to expand that area on the north side. Next slide. Town Green, which is listed on your, um, on your agenda. The reason this is important is because over um, the past couple of uh, years, we've reached out to you all, inclusive of for the property that the Town Green is gonna sit on for purchase of the jail property. All of this is inclusive in our downtown master plan. This is our anchor development for downtown. So the projects that I've mentioned to you before are kind of the um, exterior corners to be able to connect everything. Uh, you all, the board of commissioners are responsible for several different uh, pieces of property in downtown. So over time throughout the years, um, we have reached out to you and we'll continue to reach out to you because this is part of what we want to do as far as cleaning up the downtown area and making certain that we really truly have a livable, workable, um, and entertainment area in the downtown area. The project is an estimated $15 million. It, had gone out, it has already gone out to bid. We've received those bids. Staff is evaluating those. Um, uh, the portion of the cleanup for the property was paid for via general fund. Our design was paid for via SPLOS and the entire construction will be paid for via revenue bonds. The purchase of the bridge that connects uh, the fire station administration building and the property we will be using, that will become an entertainment space. Uh, individuals will be able to host events in that area. The tower itself will actually have a rooftop area that you will be able to look over the town green. We are in the due diligence phase with the private developer Mill Creek that's done a significant amount of development in the Atlanta area to incorporate 10,000 square feet of retail, 10,000 square feet of um, other uh, restaurant uh, capacity as well as uh, 350 residential units additional parking, and the city itself will be responsible for the town green portion in the amphitheater. 
so that is our, our key iconic project. I know that you all um, from the Board of Commissioners, you all actually have a property near and adjacent. Um, so I would just say, um, as you think about your plans and the things that you want to do, I think that this will be a key catalytic project as you develop your goals moving forward for the future. Next, project, next slide, please. I mean, just kind of finally, just to kind of give you an idea of when I say clean up and make certain that we're being responsible for the downtown area and making certain that it's livable, um, viable, and that it's a place that individuals want to grow. Um, we are we understand that the downtown area is the core of Douglas County, so we want to make certain that we're doing our part. Uh, Club Drive was a former location for our maintenance and sanitation uh, location. We have moved uh, what I would consider the utilitarian portion of our operation, sanitation and transportation, to an area uh, near Cedar Mountain Road. Uh, that was paid for uh, via the, the funds that we collect for sanitation funds. We're repurposing this facility for our parks maintenance facility. Uh, we didn't really have a true maintenance facility, but this will be a, a center location that will allow us to be able to service all of our parks, considering all of the renovation that we plan on doing. And this again was paid for uh, via SPLOST. Next slide. And then finally, um, this facility on the corner of uh, Courthouse Square West uh, and Church Street. Um, you all remember, some of you have been around for a while. This used to be the former uh, police, um, the police admin building. Um, we used to also have detectives in that location as well. We did a complete renovation. So I, I would say uh, you all should uh, take a look at it, go see the building. We're very proud of it. This again is a part of us cleaning up our own act, um, making certain that as we solicit and encourage private development in the downtown. We want to make certain that we're taking care of our facilities as well. Um, and again, the total cost for this project, it was paid for um, a portion of it via sanitation funds, the general fund, as well as SPLOST. So at this point in our SPLOST program, we have um, completely spent the $20 million that we bonded out. We're on what you would consider pay go. So as the proceeds come in, uh, we're putting that toward um, uh, some renovations, transportation, and the various other projects that we have listed in the plans that we have. Next slide. And then finally, um, I just want to say, uh, particularly for the citizens, uh, to just understand we at the city of Douglasville are about long range planning. So any plan uh, that I've referenced, whether it be uh, our parks master plan, which all of our parks are listed in there, um, they are 10 to 15 year plans. We do long range uh, fiscal planning as well. So we typically know going in how we're gonna fund, uh, what that looks like. And so it's almost in a sense a plug and play. And then the, and a key part of the planning for us is community buy-in. We wanna make certain that before we go in to do anything that we have community buy-in and that planning process allows for us to do that. So we appreciate the partnership with uh, the Board of Commissioners that we've had, particularly um, from a staff standpoint. And I think I speak on behalf of the elected officials that we appreciate that as well, because when we reach out to you all, whether it be to say, hey, we want to buy this piece of property, uh, this is part of where we want to go. Uh, you all have been very receptive, receptive to that. Um, a project that I know we've reached out for you all, we are currently looking and in the phase of soliciting for phase two of our downtown conference center, which includes a hotel. And then you, um, some of the citizens may also have seen that we have an RFP out for a new city hall, because we know that that's where we want to be in the next five years is that we've completely outgrown where we are. So that is the next steps to figuring out where in the downtown area we should go. So I thought as I talk about the town green, just to kind of give you an idea of how it all fits in to everything that we're doing. But I again, appreciate the opportunity to be able to present to you all and I'll be happy to answer any questions about anything that I've presented to you today. Any questions for the board? Thank you so much, uh, Ms. Hampton. Yes. Okay. We have the floor, Mr. Robinson. Thank you, Madam Chair. Good morning, Madam Manager, how are you? Um, well, Commissioner, how are you? Wonderful, wonderful. It's always good to, to hear you. Um, and we appreciate that. I don't think you've been before the Board of Commissioners in quite what 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 ages, right? And so actually, I actually you I, know what? It is my first time, Commissioner. This your first time? It is my in first official time. capacity. All right. In official capacity, yes, sir. Well, we appreciate you here. We appreciate what you do for the city, um, being one of the leaders um, that really makes things happen and stuff. So thank you for that. 
um, an excellent presentation. So I'll, I'll get right to it. Um, to your point, um, you know, I'm proud of what I, I've seen the city um, evolve. It, it's, it's dormancy. You guys, uh, under you guys' leadership, Madam Mayor, you have, um, it's awakened. Um, it, it's moving. You can see it. Um, and I'm excited. Um, obviously, y'all are about a year or so ahead of us as it relates to moving forward to our, in other words, we've outgrown our current footprint uh, and how we, uh, where we deliver services from. So um, thank you for that leadership and showing the way. Um, that being said, um, you're right. Um, the old jail, uh, I remember when we built the new jail and uh, that old jail used to just sit there. And this is even pre y'all administration. I used to always contemplate like, well, why are we in the city? We need to get out downtown, right? We're, we're in the way. I know the county has evolved where the city and county was just one little intimate circle. Remember back when I came on board, um, District 2 used to be downtown. The jail was built in District 2, where I had all of downtown up to the railroad, right? And so I, I, so I recognized sort of uh, how it evolved and I had a, a certain um, vested interest in, in how things played out over time. So I'm glad you guys have um, you know, taken us up on getting rid of that asset because it was one of those like, okay, we're, why are we even downtown? We've got this big old space out here called the county and why are we so doubled up on each other downtown? And you guys really needed that space. So if there's some other assets that you're looking for, I mean, I'm open to it because again, we, 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 you have to, we don't need to be in the middle of that way, be in the middle of your way. Um, and, I, and I'm speaking to my, my peers um, that if you talk about cooperation, not co uh, competition, I think it's key. Um, it's one Douglas in essence, right? Uh, but the city has its own character area, very different than the county. It works well together. And I'm glad to see that the retail space and the things that you, I mean, you, I mean, you guys are really doing. It's like, okay, now we're talking. There you go. So I'm proud of that effort. I got one question for you. So, um, Transportation. So tell me this. So I got lost somewhere around McDonald's and stuff when I was driving the other day, like, and I, I was arguing with my Uber driver. Um, is there any other changes to the configuration? Will you cut off downtown 92? T tell me about where that is, because I, I get asked that all the time where the citizens, I thought at one time y'all were going to close downtown, that immediate area for walkable, livable. Can you speak to that character area for us, just to, for us to clarify what it is? Yes, sir. So um, you all may have seen that um, if you are coming from Pauling County and you're headed to uh, downtown Douglasville, you, you have two options. Uh, you can take which is the new route that takes you uh, to I-20 quicker, or you can continue on which is Old Dallas Highway, which takes you into the core of downtown. Um, currently, right now, the Campbellton Street crossing is closed. That was an agreement that was made between the Georgia Department of Transportation and Norfolk Southern uh, to allow for the funding uh, for Highway 92. However, the McCarley Street crossing, which is directly across from Mitchell Appliance, is being upgraded with a signalized crossing as well as uh, pedestrian access. Unfortunately, it's not open. The new one is not open as of yet because there's been a delay in the ordering of the arm uh, that will come down for the train. So I do believe the estimated time frame on that new crossing opening uh, will be in November. So that's what I'm being told. The area near um, McDonald's and um, Douglas, uh, basically Hospital Drive, there will be a service road that extends from Chick-fil-A back towards Hospital Drive. So where that area in front of CBS is closed off, the reason that's closed off, it's closed off for construction. It'll take about three to four months for that to be completed. But once that's completed, that area will open up. And we'll tell you that we do have a um, LCI and ARC funding that we're putting toward uh, the area of Fairburn Road between Hospital Drive and Highway 78 to upgrade that to a more pedestrian friendly uh, type of street because now that will become your because if you're not if, when you get off I-20 headed to Douglasville headed north nine times out of ten if you're headed to Paulding County you will take the new route but once the road is completed if you're headed to downtown we want to make certain that individuals have um, a very nice greeting into downtown so they can make the choice of going to Hospital Drive or they can continue to head south uh, or north, I should say, on Fairburn Road, we're looking at tightening the street 
looking at putting in pedestrian bike lanes. And again, all of those plans are accessible under our transportation heading on our city's website. That's awesome. All right, very good. So my, my last question, I have to yield the floor. I've got two questions. So last one is, um, so to the citizens, when we really, I guess this was back in 2017, when Madam Chair first took took the helm and we went to New York, we this SPLOS, um, the current SPLOS was um, based on the county's credit. And we entered into a relationship with the city, which we would share, um, obviously, those proceeds. I think it was 45 million and 25 million was the original amount. We, we bonded collectively about 70 million and the rest was pay go. Madam Manager, you just, um, I wanna make sure I understood. So, right, so we're riding on the house um, here pretty soon. You already into it and we will be soon riding um, obviously pay go. Are you aware of the excess, which is above and beyond what we originally planned back in 2017? Um, yeah. Yes, sir. And, and we, we have planned for that. Um, Ms. Subedan has uh, been providing uh, the current um, uh, new estimates. So we have those. We've been making our projections as well. Um, we have, I will just say, we have been so fortunate for the SPLOS. And, and I really do hope that the citizens um, would entrust us again for a new SPLOS. Um, our biggest areas where the SPLOS have become critical and where we can use those excess funds are in public safety and transportation. Um, the SPLOS program for the city of Douglasville, um, if we didn't have it, we really would not have a true capital program. It equates to about four mills for the city of Douglasville, which is critical because in public safety, that allows us to buy all of our uh, police vehicles. So anytime there's access, there's always a vehicle needed. And anytime there's access, there's always a road that needs to be repaved. So we're very, very thankful and grateful for that opportunity. Awesome. Thank you so much um, for those comments. I have to yield the floor. Madam Chair, I yield back. I thank you so much, uh, Mr. Robinson. Any other questions for our yes, ma'am? Okay, Commissioner Dider, yes. you have the floor. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Uh, this is to Marsha. Is she still on the line? Yes. I am, yes, ma'am. Uh, this is something that Commissioner Robinson alluded to about us being in y'all's way. Mm -hmm. Do y'all prefer the county complexes to be within the city limits in order to um, help your businesses? I, I would just say from a philosophical standpoint, you know, from a citizen, you know, they, they want to just have access to their locations. Um, Commissioner Goddard, I, I would respectfully not want to answer that because I don't want to answer for the citizens. I think that, you know, maybe you know, the, the best way is, you know, where where are the citizens needing to have access to services? I can speak for the, from the city's behalf. For us, it is critical for us to have services in the core of town. Uh, we have heard and we know from our citizens where they want us to be. So when we look for City Hall, um, it's the reason why, or even the hotel, uh, we've heard about that. We know we'll come knocking and say, hey, if there's an opportunity uh, with property from the Board of Commissioners, we're going to come asking because that is where they want their city services. But I think it would be unfair for me to answer um, for the for the for the county. Uh, the reason I brought it up was because when we were talking about the location of the new courthouse, mm -hmm. it was concerned from the city that we were moving out of the downtown area because uh, of the restaurants and things like that that need the support. But uh, I was just wondering is it, you know, um, how you feel now? Is it the same now or before? But if you don't want to answer, that's fine. I was just asking. <laughs> well, no, what I can do is I know that some of um, the city's elected officials are on board. I would just ask them to reach out to you because I'm pretty certain they hear more from the citizens than I do. Um, mm -hmm. So I think if, if um, I know Madam Mayor, if you're on, I think I saw um, uh, Council Member Estes, if you all would reach out to Commissioner Guider, um, I would appreciate it. All right. Thank you very much. I yes, yield back, Madam. Okay. Thank you so much, Commissioner Guider. Any other remarks, Board of Commissioners? Yes, Madam Chair. Okay. Uh -huh, Commissioner Carthen. Good morning, Ms. Hampton. Thank you so much for coming on this morning. Um, Good morning. Thank you. Uh, I, I'm, I'm going to put on two hats this morning. I am a citizen of Douglasville, and so, uh, and I'm proud of my city and my and my city councilman, Coach Adams. I appreciate him and my mayor, and um, I'm just excited about what you guys are doing. Right, you're leveraging every tool that you have in the toolbox to make sure we have such a great city. 
Uh, when I heard that you're doing a geo bond, $25 million to invest down there, you're utilizing the good debt in order to bring us things that we've been asking for. And I've been here 21 years. So I'm just excited as a citizen to go to the ballot and, and check you know, the affirmative. I'll just say that, right? Because I don't want to sway anybody else. <laughs> Um, <laughs> but, uh, and, and, you know, what, what you're doing with the parks and, and all of that really matters because that's where we as citizens um, see our dollars and that's how we experience it. And so I just wanted to say kudos to the entire city council and to you for leveraging all the tools in the toolbox to bring us as citizens into the 21st century because it does matter. And so um, I'm also excited to hear, you know, all of the uh, the good things that are coming about from the SPLOS, how you're utilizing the SPLOS, how you're matching it with your general fund dollars, how you're managing your physical, um, you know, assets and, and all of that. So I'm just excited. Any, I, you know, I will just say anything that we can do as citizens and as a board of commissioners to continue you guys to push you you know, in a positive direction so that the city can grow because the bottom line and the realization is if you do good, we do good, right? And if we yeah. do good as a county, you do good as a city. And it, it, it truly is a win-win for both of us. So I think that's the synergy that I hope we continue to have as we go through um, county government. Um, my only other question to you is, what's going on with the library? I didn't hear anything about the library. Well, and, and so I, hey, this is what I will say and, and encourage, um, you know, with the Town Green Amphitheater Project, of course, you all know that is in the back door of the downtown library. Yeah. You all own property there. So, you know, I would encourage conversation. Um, the public health facility is there, that that could be an awesome connection. Um, on the other side of the street from that location is West Pines. The city has put a, a tremendous amount of money in West Pines. We've done excellent this year for golfing. Of course, COVID has, I think, awakened a new sport for some people or, or got people out of the house. So y'all got I my think, husband there almost every day. <laughs> yes, ma'am. So I think, you know, if, if you all, we are willing and happy to partner on that area. If you all want to start those conversations, I think it is very, very timely and a huge opportunity. Wonderful. Thank you so much. With yes, that, thank you. I will. <laughs> thank you so much, uh, Commissioner Carson, for those in, uh, inspiring words. I see our, uh, any other uh, questions from the boards or remarks? Okay. I see our Madam Mayor has her hand up. Uh, Madam Mayor, you have the floor. You, your hand is up. I want to acknowledge you as well. Thank you so much, Commission Chair, Dr. Ramona Jackson Jones. I just uh, wanted to appreciate you all having the um, a forum for us to present this morning. Thank you so much, Board of Commissioners, for your collaboration and your partnership. It is a pleasure to govern with you all. Thank you, City Manager, for doing such an excellent job that you always do. Um, I just wanted to talk to to respond to Commissioner Jones and Jones Guider's question about um, services in the city, in the county. The city is in the county. Um, we're Douglasville, Douglas County. We're Douglas County as well. So whatever services are there that the citizens want, we're happy that the county, that you're there with us. Um, we just wanna provide services to the citizens. That's what I hear. But in terms of us building the downtown to make connectivity, which the, the downtown of course is the heartbeat for the community, any community, um, we just had some, some areas where we needed to move the chess pieces around um, with buildings that you owned in the city. So it is, it's your buildings, it's the county buildings. And if you all, um, we would love to work with you, but we are definitely um, optimistic in that we continue to work together. We appreciate you all being very amenable to selling us the old jail and any other uh, properties that we have talked to you about. You've been very helpful. So we appreciate that. We just we're trying to connect those 17 projects together that the city manager talked about earlier in the presentation and um, help our SLOS dollars to continue to go on. We thank the citizens for a phenomenal um, response to SPLOS. So that's all I wanted to say. We're trying to expand, as Commissioner Carthen said, with entertainment, as well as services and eatery and all of that to make full service and life more comprehensive in the city and the county, um, as Douglasville, Douglas County. That's all I want to say. Thank you so much, uh, Commissioner Jones. Thank you so much, uh, Madam Mayor. 
Any other remarks from the board or if you have any remarks out this close by saying yeah, I'm here. Uh-huh. Yeah. You have the floor. Yeah, because I'm sure you get the last word. Uh, good morning, <laughs> Madam Mayor. I just want to say hello to you. And it's always good to, to be in your grace. Uh, good morning. I, I you know again, uh, look where we are. We're, we're thinking what three to five years out, 10 years. The decisions that the, these two leadership groups will make, well, obviously it'll it'll transcend my tenure in essence, but it's going to last for the next 20, 25 years, right? The decisions we make today are going to uh, catapult us to a whole nother level. And so while we're evolving, I mean, we're actively, we, we, we're just not, it's just, it, it's, it's intentional, right? And this is the first time I've ever seen it that, to your point, the cooperation, um, the coexistence. Uh, but again, what you, what you don't want to do is impose, right? And I think that's important. I mean, if you think about the 7,000 businesses that are within the total county footprint and there's a subset of that within the city, you know, the, the county has three cities it has to support. Uh, you have um, communities that have their own character areas and you're trying to spread it out, right? You, you're trying to, where, where, where should things be? And it's, I mean, it's, it's just, I'm, I find it delightful just watching how it's being shaped. Right, you know where things should be placed. What's in the best interest and stuff. And again, we're growing up. Um, everything is not concentrated in the city of Atlanta, right? You have Buckhead, you have Midtown, you you have expanded areas in which things are are spread out. Um, and I, I just want to show that, at least from my perspective, that uh, the city it does matter. It does matter. But yet the county has it's a separate jurisdiction. Right. And I appreciate Marsha being as savvy as she is. Don't answer that question. <laughs> Very good. You just stay out of that. Uh, because again, at the end of the day, it's like, okay, well, they've got their own character area and where they think their citizens should go. And while they're mutual, no, the city is very distinctive. It has its own tax base. Right. So there, there's sort of a, you know, there should be, it should be reciprocal, but at the same point, be respectful. Um, you know, the city has what we have, what, do what 28, you guys are 28, 30% of our population of the overall county's population. You have a footprint geographically that's within that. There's enough room for everybody to spread out and, and, and begin to develop and stuff. So again, I, I it's important that I, I wouldn't want to encroach upon you. I want to be there to celebrate you, uh, support whatever you need to be, to be, to be that cheerleader for, for the whole county, to be that city, to be that downtown. Absolutely. But, it, but no way would I would ever want to make it a conditional that I would tie you. It has some type of string attached that, that would um, encumber or prohibit your growth in your future. So I, I just encourage you to keep going, keep doing what you guys are doing. And we're very proud. Keep leading the way. Again, we're about a year behind you, but we're coming. I just wanted to share that, Madam Chair. I just had to acknowledge the mayor's presence. I yield the floor. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Any other remarks from the board? Okay, with that being said, I will close out by saying that I'm just so excited about both the cities, uh, both Dillerick and also the city of Douglasville and the uh, county. We've made tremendous progress with our SPLOST. We have uh, outperformed ourselves. We have set standards where others will be judged. This partnership has been stellar, and I hope and pray the citizens will allow us to do it again in 2022 as we present, because I'm telling you that we have... Uh, and I love football, so we've made a lot of rushing yards and, and, and a lot of, and we have the proof in the pudding, as our vice chairman said today. We're just not talking about it, we're being about it. You see the progress throughout the entire county and the cities all over as you drive, uh, despite our situation with the pandemic. I do want to say that today, I believe uh, I heard uh, city manager when you came in, you mentioned uh, that there's a hotel that you all are planning to build. And I'm not sure if there was a special request of the Board of Commissioners. I, I appreciate the, the presentation. It was very delightful, but I want to always be direct with my board. I want to see, you know, we talked about a, a parking space. Can you share with us about the parking uh, lot? And then also discuss any solutions you have for uh, the Board of Commissioners in terms of just making some uh, temporary changes to our model that we have downtown for our parking situation for our staff. And if I believe they just, it, it would just be fair if they could hear that this morning. Yes, ma'am. Um, so we are, are looking, we're working with a hotel developer that's developed um, hotels um, in both uh, Noonan and other places uh, in the Metro. It, it's that they develop Hilton and Marriott brands. I'm not able at liberty to tell you which one of those um, that would be coming, but I can tell you it would be a Hilton or Marriott pro um, project. 
Um, I can also tell you that their interest, because this is a second phase of the conference center, years ago when we first started the conference center, a hotel was always supposed to be a component um, of the project. They want to be very close. So that would, the closest um, property would be uh, that we would have access to, that we can minimize the cost um, of the project would be where the former uh, police precinct was located on the corner of Bowden and Church Street. Now, many may not know, but we only own the building. Uh, the county government owns the entire parking lot. So if we're gonna utilize that space, uh, we would have to have access to that parking lot. Um, you all do have some government vehicles that are parked there, uh, but we've taken a look at what we can possibly do and share parking in the parking deck. And there's a tremendous amount of parking available um, either on the uh, third level and then for vehicles that would not be able to fit in the deck, we do have a space that's to the rear near the loading dock of the conference center where we park um, trucks such as bucket trucks and others that as a part of any purchase and sale agreement, we would be willing to, um, to share in that. Um, the parking deck, uh, it's, it's not always full, it's, it's free parking, um, but we would dedicate those spaces uh, to you all. I did have our public services director, Greg Roberts, reach out to um, one of your staff, uh, I believe James Worthington, to make certain that they talk through things that maybe I'm not aware of because they're typically boots on the ground, but we are prepared to provide dedicated parking uh, for those vehicles so that if um, you were to provide that property to us, you would not be out. Um, uh, the available parking that's needed. Thank you so much. Uh, yes, ma'am. Right. Board of Commissioners, you heard her deliberation in a question. Okay. All right. Sound like we don't have any questions. And certainly, oh, County Administrator, I see your hand. Yes, Madam Chair. Actually, we do have a parking solution worked out. James Worthington actually has a diagram and we were going to share that with you um, as we talk more about the acquisition and executive session today. All right. Well, thank you so much, Manager uh, Hampton for coming in. Thank you so much, County Administrator, for just briefing me quickly about what our plans are. And it was a delightful presentation. Progress. Thank you. All right, Board of Commissioners. Can you hear me? All of a sudden, my cameras, I mean, my computer's giving me some type of message. Can you hear me still? Yes, we can. Can. You can. Okay, I just want to make. All right, Board of Commissioners, we're going to move on to the next minutes for tomorrow. I ask if you could just take the opportunity to review your minutes and uh, we will approve uh, accordingly. Uh, next, we have a proclamation, which is tab number three, proclaiming September 22nd, 2021 is National American Business Women's Day in Douglas County. And that would, uh, this proclamation will be rendered by our own uh, Commissioner Carthen of District 3. We're going to move on to tab number four, which is a public hearing. We have Title VI Program Plan for Connect Douglas Transit Services. And we have our Director Valentine. Could you bring us up to speed? Yes, uh, thank you. Good morning, Madam Chair and Commissioners. Um, we will have the, uh, the public hearing tomorrow uh, for, for the board to consider adoption of the Title VI plan. Title VI is uh, a title under the 1964 Civil Rights Act that essentially guides the uh, programs within the county for federal compliance uh, to ensure that there's no discrimination uh, regarding uh, race, color, or national origin. Each entity within the county that receives uh, federal funding has to abide by these regulations. We have to convey this information to the public uh, that, uh, that there are certain protections uh, as it relates to access to the services that the county provides. And um, um, that is uh, what the Title VI plan is for. It is typically on a three-year cycle uh, that the plan is adopted. And then periodically there are reports that are uh, sent to the Federal Transit Administration from the county, uh, essentially documenting how the county is in compliance with Title VI. Uh, so uh, tomorrow will be yet another opportunity for the public to have input 
into the program, ask any questions, and then uh, uh, the, the uh, plan itself will be uh, ready for the board to consider adoption tomorrow. Madam Chair, you still out there? Are we still here, guys? Yeah, we're on. Um, I see that she is muted. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure if she realizes she's muted. Let's hold on a minute. Is she frozen or muted? Muted, I and we'll, uh, I'll check. All right. So in the meantime, um, respectfully, we'll yield the floor to me just currently. Um, and so to full board of commissioners, are there any questions um, that you guys like to propose to Director Valentine regarding this matter? I okay. just muted. Okay. I'm the assistant way up to look at the okay. I'll check yours too. Vice Chair, can you hear me? I can, I can hear you fine. Okay. All right, so uh, we'll just get again, they'll catch Madam Chair. So that being said, um, I'm going to ask one question, uh, take a liberty until she gets back. Director Valentine. Yes, sir. All right, so this is an annual process that we have to go through. Is that accurate? Uh, the plan itself is adopted every three years, but uh, um, annually we provide an update to the Federal Transit Administration as it relates to Connect Douglas program. Okay. And again, it's just established as, and it, it has a direct tie to our funding for non-compliance? That is correct. It is a requirement uh, uh, for the federal funding that we comply with Title VI and that we document that compliance and also that we have public outreach to let the public know that th they are entitled to certain protections, uh, such as uh, making sure that the programs are accessible to them, that they're able to take advantage of uh, whatever services the county provides without regard to any uh, impediments that they may have. Um, uh, as it relates to Connect Douglas, Certainly, um, access to the to the buses is, is done uh, through lift chairlifts to provide access to um, persons with disabilities and the like. Um, the services um, and programs are also um, the information is conveyed uh, in 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 addition to English to in Spanish uh, to pro so make sure that that. Uh, uh, they have the, the capability of availing themselves of those services. So uh, essentially, it, it, it not only as it relates to transit, but any program that the county engages in, um, we have to be in compliance, and we are, uh, but we have to document and periodically go out to the public to make sure that they have the opportunity to uh, have any, any input that they may desire. If there's a, a complaint, for example, there is a complaint procedure within the plan that we that the board would, would be adopting to avail the public with, of that opportunity to register any concerns they may have. I got you. Again, my final question is that when you talk about outreach itself, how are we facilitating that now? Is that through the collaborative firm? Is it inherent in just sort of materials that we provide, like, can you give us a framework for that? When you said we do outreach, how, how do we codify that? How we, what receipts or evidence do we have? To yes, we, we do it in, in several ways. Certainly um, there are postings uh, throughout the facility at the transportation center uh, that uh, indicate uh, that these protections are available to the public. We also post the same notices on the, on the website uh, so that the public is aware of, uh, of the program and, and the compliance. And uh, the collaborative for, uh, firm has also been engaged in furthering that effort by doing public outreach, um, you know, to, to make sure that the public has yet another opportunity to uh, voice any concerns, provide any input. We have, as part of the, this particular uh, public hearing uh, scheduled for tomorrow, published the notice in the newspaper 
uh, a couple of different times, uh, notifying the public that, that it is coming, that, that they will have the opportunity to provide uh, any input they may desire. Thank you, Miguel. Uh, any other questions from my peers? Okay, Director Valentin, thank you. Um, is Madam Chair back? Yes, can you hear me now? Uh, yes, yeah, okay. I was, I was in cyberspace, thank you. Uh, no like problem, I need to go back in here. Okay, and and we, we have my um, actual laptop as a backup now. I have IS in here working on it. All right, we're going to move on to our next item, uh, Board of Commissioners. And thank you so much, Director Valentin, uh, for buying me some time. <laughs> and thank you so much, uh, Vice Chairman Robinson. We're going to move to County Administrator Business. County Administrator, do you have business this morning? I do see you have tab number five, which is COVID vaccine incentive update. You have the floor, County Administrator Superdan. Thank you, Madam Chair. I have quite a bit of business this morning. Okay. Um, and I have exciting news. So I'm going to, um, if it's okay, is it possible for me to add an item ahead of the vaccine update? Oh, absolutely. Get right to it. I love, we love exciting news. This board, we, we're full of excitement. So <laughs> get the floor. Well, I'm proud to announce that we had applied for a $1.2 million grant for a federal grant for an aerial ladder truck. And I'm pleased to let you know that our grant has been approved by the um, Department of Homeland Security. So that will be um, $1,090,909.99. So um, the county will be required to match it by $109.90.91. Um, and $90.91. And I would like permission to put that on the agenda tomorrow for your approval um, so that we can get back to FEMA and let them know that we are appreciative of the grant and we would like to accept it. I concur. Madam Chair. Anything else? Any other comments? No, I'm, well, any concur. comments or remarks on the board regarding this exciting announcement? I concur. This is uh, District 4. Okay. Any other? Okay. Well, congratulations. It's very exciting to hear that because I know we kind of rolled this one to the Board of Commissioners on a, on a, uh, on a moment's notice, really. It was, and if my memory serves me cor uh, correctly, I just would like to thank the board for approving the opportunity for the uh, application process to go forward. You may not remember, but it was a couple of months ago. It was just last minute, threw it on the agenda. You all allowed it to go through. So we, we, I'm thankful. And also the Fire and EMS Committee is thankful and the County Administrator is thankful. This is, this is huge news for us. So- Madam Chair. Mm -hmm. You have the floor. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Madam Administrator. Again, this, this is a, a great win, not necessarily a quick one, but it, it's a deliberate great win. Um, this is something that we've always talked about, having a focus on grants, mm -hmm. leveraging our capital stack, mm -hmm. right? And it's having somebody dedicated to that role. So obviously I'm segueing and obviously, you know, um, framing it that I know that you're down that path. I know the board is behind um, a focused effort on grants, um, you know, putting ideology a, a, aside, whether or not you want to have federal grant ties or not, it's an important liquidity. Just like our, our, our mayor just stated, Madam Mayor and, and Madam Manager, is that you know you our our size county and city we we have little little, little capital we're all playing with, with about a nickel, right? And so we really don't have um, um, our checking account cannot hold paying for houses and cars. We we have to use another funding source. So um, beyond just another tax on top of the people, um, it's some sometimes you can leverage that with what we call. Um, sources like this with federal grants or state grants. And so this is key, all right? So that takes pressure off of um, um, obviously having other sources. It, it now allows you to take that $1.2 million that we might have, we probably did need this fire truck, um, but now you've got this funding source that allows us to pay what, at least what, 90, 10? We get to pay what, 10%? Um, and we can leverage the rest, all right? Mm -hmm. So thank you for that. I had to drive home that point. Like now we're cooking. Now we got to focus and we're able to deliver because we, we, we've been, and while we get grants, there's so many grants that are available right now. 
Right. Um, a lot of it is just you, you, you can't be diluted in your effort. Either you're going to go get them or you're not, right? You, you can't play with them because they're competitive. You got to focus. You got to have the technical experts and stuff. So, again, job well done. I just wanted to acknowledge that. Um, I guess y'all will park it wherever it needs to be parked, wherever it's best used. <laughs> Um, and so I don't know what a ladder truck would be used for. I'm sure it's not getting cats out trees. Is it a ladder truck is what, for big buildings or, or big houses? What, what is a ladder well, truck for? Multi-story. Um, I think this is going to be a hundred foot ladder. So this is for multi-story buildings. Ideally a county our size, we should have a minimum of five. Um, right now we have three. So this puts us, and, and some of the ones that we have are beyond their useful life. So this puts us in a really good position um, and the match will be funded from SPLOST, from the EMS fire section of the SPLOST. Sounds good. Sounds excellent. Congratulations to you and Chief and, and Madam Chair. I yield the floor. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Vice Chair. And uh, if, if you will, uh, County Administrator, I, I know you're coming forward i believe it has it to it and you just if he's on the line just let him share his excitement to the listeners as well i know he shared it with you but we're excited i think you broke up madam Cherry. you're asking for the fire chief yeah, he he the line. allow him to say just a few words i know he's he said it's, this is huge i believe that's yeah. what, the only word he said is huge for him yeah, he's, he's on go ahead chief oh thank you to the citizens, thank you, uh, Madam Chair, County Administrator, uh, Board of Commissioners. We are just so excited to be able to contribute to our citizens and uh, we can't do it without you. Uh, we all in this together and just thank everyone. We're just excited. Can't wait for that truck to roll in so we can uh, do some exciting things for our citizens. And it'll help our ISO as well. So I'll use it for a bike. Thank you all very much. Thank you, Chief. All right, uh, County Administrator, we have the floor again. Okay. Commissioner Guider's hand is up. Yes, Commissioner Guider, I see your hand. Yes, uh, and I just wanted to inject the, the fact that our ladder truck was destroyed on I-20 by a, a tractor trailer not uh, too long ago. So this is going to be, this is a big deal to replace that. And um, uh free up some of the splash funds, so thank you. You are so welcome. All right, thank you so much, Commissioner Guider. Uh, County Administrator, you have the floor again. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, so I wanted to give you an update and also solicit your support um, on the vaccine, COVID vaccine incentive for employees that you um, approved, I think it was last meeting, we already have 450 employees that have signed on. Um, and of course, now we're really encouraging those who have not been vaccinated to take advantage of this um, limited opportunity for an incentive, but most definitely um, get the vaccine. You know, we're trying to incentivize and encourage um, getting the vaccine so that we can achieve herd immunity in the county. Um, tagging onto that, we have an on-site vaccine clinic here tomorrow um, between, um, I think it's 10 and 4.30 in Citizens Hall. So no excuses. Anybody in the courthouse, anybody who's a county employee can come by, get their first shot, second shot um, right here on site. And so we just want to make sure that it is easy access, um, no cost to the employee, we prefer if you bring your health card, but if you don't have it handy, we're not going to turn anybody away. Um, on the third thing I wanted to um, ask the board, you know, we are proceeding with September Saturday in person and we are emphasizing public safety. We are partnering with the Cobb Douglas um, Public Health and we would like to offer a vaccine incentive to the public. Um, not inconsistent with what some of our surrounding counties have done. We've talked to them. They've given us some advice on um, how to make it successful and not fall into pitfalls that they had. Um, but we would like to do gift cards of $100 for the first 100 people um, this September, the first week of September Saturday, which is um, this Saturday, the 18th and then 200 on the second September Saturday event. 
Um, of course, our target is um, Douglas County residents. We are encouraging you. Um, as of this morning, we have achieved 40% of fully vaccinated individuals in the, um, in the county, which is behind the state and behind our partner, um, Cobb County. So we would like to really see that increase, especially encouraging people to make sure they get the second shot um, because we know that one dose alone is helpful, but not, um, not entirely giving you the maximum amount of available protection. And so we would like to ask the board for support for that. Um, that would equate to about $30,000. And we're partnering, as I said, with Douglas Cobb um, Health Department. And we would like to put that on the agenda for your approval tomorrow if we have a consensus. And then the last thing I want, well, two last things. One is the, um, the $1,000 hazard pay that you approved last meeting. Employees will be able to collect that today. I did send out an email to all leadership this morning with the instructions. This is federal funding, so it's important that we follow very specifically their rules and we get a signature on every person that receives that funding. And lastly, I wanted to let you know that the executive team met last Friday for eight hours in retreat. And um, we worked hard on several items, not, to, not the least of which is change management. Um, we did a SWOT analysis that expounded on the SWOT analysis that was done as part of the strategic plan planning initiative. And we, we really talked about how to work cohesively as a team to move, the, um, to move the county forward. So thank you for giving us the opportunity to lead and in supporting us in our efforts to gain the, the, um, some of the cohesiveness and some of the skills that we need to effectively serve the community. And that's all I have, Madam Chair. Thank you so much, uh, County Administrator. With that being said, uh, Board of Commissioners, do you have any questions regarding the update? Uh, Commissioner Carthen, I see you. Thank you. Uh, you all won't see me, excuse me, Commissioner Carthen, but for the remainder, right now my camera is completely out, but I can't flip to my laptop, but rather than cause any disruption, my voice, I hope, is just enough for the moment. So you have the floor, Commissioner Carthen. Thank you. Uh, Madam Subadun. Yes, ma'am. You know, I am excited to hear that we are offering the incentives to the public as well as we have the employees because we do want to get our numbers up as much as possible. I just have a couple of questions for you. Is there a sign up link or some type of way to manage this? And if, um, and I heard you say this is for Douglas County, Douglasville citizens. Um, is there something that people need to bring in order to um, show proof of that? How will we manage this? But I'm excited that we're trying to do it. So um, if you could just expound on that for me. Sure. Um, well, we, we first want to make sure we have your approval <laughs> before we send out a link. And the idea is we would send that out tomorrow. Um, anybody who pre-registered, the health department will collect their information and make sure they're a Douglas County resident. Um, and of course, we would ask them to bring that when they come, which would be a driver's license or an ID or something else that identifies their address as being here in Douglas County. Um, and so the, the health department will be helping to manage that for us. And once we have your approval, we'll go ahead and, and send something out, promote it on social media um, and our website and, and the usual venues to try to get the word out. Wonderful. So that, that kind of helps me in, in determining, you know, if, if I want to support this. And then my second question to you is, um, where are the funds for this coming from? I heard you say $30,000. How are we appropriating for this effort? Um, so my proposal would be that it come from the Public Health um, CARES Act funding that you had put aside. We do still have funding in that bucket. Um, which was appropriated earlier this year. I think you did that in January before I got here. Awesome, thank you so much um, for that. And um, I just wanna piggyback one second on the um, fire trucks. Uh, I couldn't get off mute to, to ask, but I, uh, is this the, um, 
effort that Chief Jolivet asked us to um, approve when he had um, identified like a grant writer or someone to, to mm -hmm. assist. This is that one. That's the, yes, that's the one. <laughs> it's so awesome. You know, I, I I am like in awe of, you know, I'm, I'm not going to pump him up, but Chief Joe Levette is doing an amazing job in getting us um, funds and resources and recruiting people. I, I am just, I am overwhelmed and just, I love it. I love it because if we as a government don't reach out to uh, to get those federal dollars and to get those other resources and to get grants, we can't meet the need. And I sat on the fire EMS committee and I know how hard um, the, the, um, the fire and EMS staff work and to have the tools necessary, right? Not to have trucks that don't fully meet the, uh, the demand um, it was concerning. So the fact that he came in here and hit the ground running, and I think this is probably like his second or third grant that he's gotten in just a short time that he has been here, it's amazing. So I just wanna challenge all of our departments to, to you know, and especially the BOC, we got to get a grant team on board. This is just a small snippet of right. what could be done, but mm -hmm. I just wanna implore us as a entire BOC put the resources behind getting a grants team. Mm -hmm. Two people to come in and fill out those, get those data points in, manage grants that come in. It's only gonna help us as citizens and taxpayers and this board of commissioner to meet the needs of the entire public. So um, kudos to you, Chief Jolivet, and kudos to you, Madam Subedin, for, um, for pushing us and, and allowing us to see um, the importance of having certain team members um, in the BOC suite. Thank you, Madam Chair. All right, thank you so much, Commissioner Carson. Madam Chair. Uh-huh, Vice Chairman Robinson, you have a few. Yeah, yeah, I had a quick question, just, just as a point of clarity uh, for employees regarding the, the, the $1,000 um, check. Is that net $1,000 or is it taxable? Explain what that means. Was it, can you clarify that, um, Madam Administrator, please? Certainly, um, I made it a point that it would be net. So um, each employee actually gets a check for a thousand dollars, and that's why it took a little bit longer because finance had to work through grossing that up, and that's why the amount was was higher than you know a thousand times the number of full time and part time employees, and so um, it is a net. Every employee should get a check for a thousand or five hundred if they're full time or part time. Yeah. And um, this question has been asked. And um, so I'll, I'll just answer it here. Everybody who was full-time or part-time on the payroll on the night that you approved this initiative will be included. Um, individuals who left a week before or two weeks before or individuals who got added a week or two after are not included. This is for everybody who was on the payroll on the date that you all approved this initiative. Excellent. That was my next question and you nailed it. Uh, I have no other questions. I just want to bring clarity to those two points, um, the amount and uh, the effect of who. Thank you, Madam Chair. I yield the floor. Okay, thank you so much, Vice Chairman. All right, uh, certainly I just have one question for you, County Administrator. I know you said you're waiting. You're not going to do anything until the board uh, approves it. I heard you when you mentioned you said the, uh, this this Saturday, a hundred dollars for those who are vaccinated. Then next Saturday, two hundred. So you know, I would be more. <laughs> can you explain it? Because I said if yeah. that's the case, I wouldn't come into no, no, no. <laughs> <Saturday> no. <laughs> so this week it's the first one hundred, still a hundred dollars, okay. and. And then on the 25th, it would be $100 for 200, the first 200 people. And so- I hear you. Okay, good. Ah, yes, especially because sense. we're on a short time frame. Mm -hmm. We know that in the 25th will give us more opportunities to reach more people. But we didn't want to delay. We feel like I'm trying to get the organization to be nimble. And so even though it is quick between Tuesday when you approve it and Saturday, I think we have to learn the art of being nimble and engaging our community and bringing people to the table. Not everything has to wait two to three weeks to get done. Oh, 
Thank you. I, I feel better now. Someone else was thinking along the same lines as me. They said, great question. They were thinking the same because I said, well, I'm coming the second. Not the first one. But no, it's $100. You just send 100 people, the first 100 people on this coming Saturday. And then our second uh, Saturday for the uh, event, it'll be the uh, first 200 people come. We'll give That's $100. Fine. There we yep. go. All right. Sounds good. That you answered my question. Sounds there's some exciting things coming down the pike and I certainly I'm still encouraging and I'm I'm hoping our citizens will be uh, engaged and, and motivated to come out and and uh, to say, certainly take this vaccine as we try to uh, establish herd immunity. Thank you so much, County Administrator. Any co uh, constitutional officers or elected officials on the line this morning that would like to, um, if you had any remarks or wanted to just bring some a matter to the Board of Commissioners' attention, this is the time. If there's not, we're going to move on to our business item, tab number six. We have tab number six, authorization to approve an employment agreement with Tyler White as an assistant public defender for state court and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Uh, our uh, public defendant and director, Monica Miles, are you on the line? I am on the line. Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Good morning. Good morning. How are you doing? Oh, good. Great. So this is... Uh... Hopefully it'll be real simple. This is a request to approve an employment contract with Tyler White as an attorney, assistant public defender. He will be replacing Jarvis Williams, who left in July. Um, so it's budget neutral, no impact, just to replace an employee left. I'm asking okay. for the commissioners for you guys to approve. Okay. Any questions from the board? I'm sure. Okay. We have the floor, Commissioner Robinson. Um, thank you, I'm sure. Good morning, Madam Public Defender. How are you? I'm great. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. So while I have no objections to the replacement, I, I do have a, a, a point of clarity. So the public defender, now that we're, we're post or somewhat post, we're coming back from the, um, the pandemic and we're getting back to business as usual. Not that you weren't already there. Um, um, as it relates to staffing, you know, in this rush, how, how are you keeping up with this? Um, you know, first, how many employees do you currently have that are actually have to defend, um, you know, constitutional rights of individuals that, uh, to, can you talk to us a little bit about that? And what, you know, you're replacing one person, but what does that mean? I mean, are you down? Are you, have you found people? What, what's going on? Okay, certainly. To start with, we have a staff of 24. There are 14 attorneys. When we're fully staffed, we have 14 attorneys in our office that represent you know, individuals. So, and yes, I mean, we were full, when we were back up, we never closed. Our office was open the entire time. So, because people were still getting arrested, they were coming into the courthouse, they come to our office, they were applying for attorneys, we were having to meet with them. Court was, was being um, in business every single week. So we were always here. So it, we're getting back to it and hopefully, we can't wait for the day when we're in court in person as opposed to being on WebEx because it's really, it's made it very difficult to, to get our clients sort of prepared for court when we have to make sure they understand how to log on to the computer, log on to the court and be prepared and, and to, you know, have the appropriate demeanor. We are not fully staffed right now. This will get us back to being fully staffed with this, with this hire, Tyler for our attorneys and we are also interviewing for a receptionist position because it is kind of hard to keep we seem to have lost several people throughout the last year and a half i think there's a shortage of public defenders i've had several other counties call me to ask what we pay our um our conflict attorneys because they're all several other counties are having a hard time because a lot of the attorneys right now just don't want to do public defender work so I, for the upcoming budget request i have ask for some additional staff, support staff, because the attorneys really need help. I don't know if I'm answering too many questions or going on too much. You asked me a little bit. So is that sort of what you're asking for? Yeah, no, that, that was great. No, no, that, that was great. And yes, I look forward to the Constitution. I always try to give the citizens context though, right? And so right. again, this is a replacement. And, and to that point, and just one final question, because I usually only take two, which is, all right, so here you are, the public defender. Are you the public defender for all the courts like how does how, how how does that work i mean this is for the citizens i know you'll come before us next month but that's just the board this is a chance to help explain what is what the public defender who you're representing people in what spirit court uh, state court i mean i mean how does it work um, family court 
Certainly, yes, sir. We represent anyone who's charged with a criminal offense in Superior Court, which are all felonies. It could be felony shoplifting up to murder, any, any, anything that's a felony. We also represent individuals who are accused or charged with offenses in state court, which can be a traffic offense, could be a DUI, could be a misdemeanor, shoplifting, uh, family, battery, you know, assault, you know, multiple multitude of offenses. So we represent, that's what we do. Um, family court is civil. It's not a criminal. We, we, the constitution provides uh, individuals who are charged with crime to be afforded counsel. So that's why we are here it's based on the constitution and the law. So yes, any, and, and as you are aware, I'm sure there's court every day, either in state court, superior court. So we're always here to cover that. And this seems unfair that you seem to be outgunned by the prosecution, the solicitor and the DA. You know, I've always had that conversation. I always advocate on your side. Like now, how you can, they, they outnumber you four to one. How do you keep up with that? How, how, and then you're saying that you can't attract me. I mean, they've got constitutional right. I mean, how do you do it? How, how do you prepare um, um, these individuals that, that should have representation when you're outgunned, um, you know, three to four to one as it relates to obviously the DA's, um, uh, you know, obviously team and the solicitors. How, how does that work? Is it imbalanced or... Well, I feel like we are outgunned and it is in balance and it's sort of always kind of been that way, not just in Douglas County, but it's that way statewide, it's that way in the country. But that being said, because I mean, we're public defenders, so there's always been this sort of tough on crime uh, mantra that's gone on for years and years and years, as I'm sure you're aware. So the public's always supported law enforcement and prosecution. But to answer your question, we fortunately in our office, we've been able to retain folks who have a lot of experience. So we have numerous attorneys in this office that have 20 plus years of experience. And then a handful that have 12 and 15. So if we can get folks trained who are passionate, skill counts for a lot. You know, it's just retaining, it's getting the younger attorneys or I say newer attorneys to come in for state court. Um, a lot of times it's just the work is so hard. They just, they get, they get burned out and they want to leave. So we do the best we can, but yes, are we outgunned? And we are outgunned in that sense, and it's not fair because we handle, our office handles Superior Court and State Court. Solicitor's office just does State Court. Superior Court, DA's office just does Superior Court, whereas we do we do both. And we also uh, represent folks in Magistrate Court at preliminary hearings, but that's really part of Felony Court as well. It's just a Magistrate Court will do a little portion of Superior Court. It's kind of, I don't want to get into too much detail, but we also um, represent folks in, in a magistrate court. So we just basically the, being able to keep our attorneys trained and skilled helps helps tremendously. Um, like I said, I am asking for more staff. I think we need more support staff to help the attorneys because the attorneys can be in court if we have a lot of help outside to do a lot of things that the attorneys just really don't have the, the ability to do right now. And I'm really worried about when things do get back to what used to be normal and all the superior court judges can have jury trials at the same time, it's gonna get crazy because there are a lot of serious cases that are just kind of in the pipeline waiting to be tried and it's gonna be really busy. Yeah, duly noted. I thank you for sharing that for the greater good, the greater county, and obviously for our own education as we go into this year's budget cycle. Thank you, um, Madam Pug Defender. Madam Chair, I yield the floor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Public Defender uh, Monica Miles, and thank you, uh, Vice Chairman Robinson. Any other comments from the board? If not, we're going to move on to our approval of the minutes. Board of Commissions uh, just ask you to just be cognizant of the uh, uh, approval of our ex uh, expenses tomorrow, and then just be prepared to approve accordingly. Uh, any discussion items, uh, Board of Commissioners, before I call for um, executive session? Uh, yes, Madam Chair. Mm -hmm. You have the floor. Thank you, Madam Chair. This is just to the to the greater good and to um, to staff and obviously to to my fellow commissioners. Um, the, the goal here, as we get into you know coming to the end of the year, um, it is to put forth um, legislation. Um, you know, one of the roles of district commissioners is that we're um, the legislative body at the local level, like Congress, like the General Assembly, and from time to time um, we put forth 
uh, what we'll call local bills. Um, and, and, and while bills are probably more known at the, at the federal and state level, we do have things such as ordinances and policies that fall in the same um, category. Um, for the most part, that in, um, those moments are brought up through staff, either through code, things need to be um, addressed, et cetera. But every now and then, um, we in our own authority uh, can put forth legislation um, through an oversight process that we think is important. So um, this morning, I, I put forth probably um, the aggregation um, of uh, legislation that we should be addressing, um, either in a reactive or in a proactive measure. I sent them to um, obviously our county clerk. Uh, and again, there is no formal process, which is another point. Uh, we were not formal, so this is more of a, of a courtesy um, by me sitting it forth. I mean, obviously any two commissioners can put something on the agenda, but the whole point is obviously just not to um, mature financially, but to um, mature legislatively, et cetera. So the goal would be to sort of, as I call it, to either create, um, to um, repeal, to um, obviously abolish, or um, for the most part, amend anything in the following six categories, um, specifically procurement, um, finance, um, obviously um, HOA, which has more to do with the code. Obviously we're gonna deal with um, committees um, that I think are important, Airbnbs, and um, things that, you know, or anything else that our fellow commissioners believe um, is important. Um, those are um, sort of the key categories that we're gonna put forth. Um, obviously uh, I have uh, Commissioner Carthen and Commissioner Mitchell who have um, agreed to join me um, in this process. Uh, it is something that I believe um, is, is important. Uh, specifically, they'll serve as either chairs or co-chairs on any one of those provisions. So I'm not carrying all of these. Um, obviously, um, obviously, everybody gets to weigh in at some point. Um, as we did with our finance legislation last year, uh, when we put forth that policy, obviously there was some readings that we want to do publicly. I think it's important that the public is aware of what we're putting forth, especially when it comes to ordinance, because we may have to publish those in a newspaper in our legal organ. So obviously um, there, there, there's a process regarding that. Uh, specifically one that I, I, I plan on championing um, is the one dealing with compensation. Um, I think it's time. Um, and so in my legislation that I plan to chair, I'm gonna put forth um, um, a livable wage for all employees um, countywide that are less than the minimum wage of $15 an hour will be raised up to a minimum amount of roughly around $31,000. Uh, in addition, um, another provision that I'm putting forth for compensation is for um, public safety, all public safety, a, 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 a minimum of 10% raise over a period of time, which the board will determine a 10% raise as relates to the, 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 the first person on deck in essence. In other words, those new entrants. Um, I think that's important. Um, um, you know, it, it's, it's great to, again, shiny objects. Uh, we, we're doing a great job. I mean, all we heard this morning, shiny objects. Um, and I appreciate the incentives that we do for vaccinations and things like that. But every now and then, but, but, and, and the mayor said it, like for service delivery. Every now and then we've got to acknowledge the people that are actually doing the work. I appreciate the reorganizations. I, I appreciate um, obviously the other elected officials and people who are gonna come before us looking for raises and everything during this year's constitutional retreat. But there's no way I'll consider anything without at first taking care of those people who are usually overlooked. Obviously I'm bringing everybody up to a minimum wage and also taking care of those um, individuals to, um, um, starting off in public safety. So that being said, Madam Chair, I just want to share those. This is just a pin. There's no action need to be taken. Obviously more things will come out here soon. And with that being said, I yield the floor. Thank you. All right, thank you. That sounds great. All right, any, any other uh, remarks, Board of Commissioners, before we go into executive session. Board of Commissioners, it's my understanding that to this morning we have Board of Appointments, Real Estate and Litigation to discuss our county. Madam attorney, Chair, yeah. yeah. Attorney, we need to go into executive session. Yes, ma'am. You need to go into executive session for real estate personnel and litigation, Madam Chair. Oh, okay. Thank you so much, Attorney Bernard. Board of Commissioners, do we have a motion to go into executive session? So Second. I'll second. We have a motion and a second. Uh, any discussion? Board of Commissioners, we have a motion and a second. When I call your district, please respond accordingly. 
accordingly. District one. District one. District two. Yes. District three. Yes. District four. Yes. Okay. District one. Yes. Okay, Chairman. Yes, we have a five zero unanimous vote to uh, to go into exec executive session, and the motion carries. All right, Board of Commissioners, uh, Lisa, you'll not Lisa. I'm sorry, Jennifer Moore. You'll take it from here, uh, Clerk. You are uh, covering this. Tell us. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Um, if you'll just hang on. Um, actually, Rick is inviting everybody to the breakout room now, so you should see something pop up on your screen. You just hit join. Okay. Board of Commissions, we're just going to go right into our uh, executive session, if that's okay with you without a break. Do we, anyone, let me just ask you, anyone need a break? Okay, citizens, we will return uh, momentarily. Okay, thank you uh, so much, Sierra McCoy. Uh, citizens of Douglas County, thank you again for your patience. Our executive session has ended again. This is September 13th, 2021. And this, this is our work session and we are getting ready to close out. I just wanted to end with my usual, but before I do I wanna to yield to my uh, fellow board of commissioners to see if there are any announcements uh, before our meeting tomorrow. Citizens, we do have our uh, legislative meeting tomorrow. It will be held at 6 p.m. And we uh, look forward to everyone joining us. Am I correct? The county administrators is 6 p.m. or 10 p.m. because I know we only have one meeting this month. It is 6 p.m. tomorrow, Madam Chair. It's, okay, I was correct. Okay, Board of Commissioners, uh, do you have any remarks or announcements for our citizens before I just close out? Okay, being none. 
uh, uh, citizens of Douglas County, thank you so much. I just wanted to give you a quick update. We are at 40% compliance, or should I say fully vaccinated here in Douglas County, and we're hoping to continue to see our numbers tick up. We do have September Saturday coming this coming Saturday, and we are looking at incentivizing our citizens with a $100 gift card. The first 100 citizen that's available to take their vaccine will be uh, met with a $100 gift card. And then our next Saturday uh, to follow, uh, we have the first 200 citizens will receive a $100 gift card. So we're really excited about that. But meanwhile, I do ask that if you, uh, if, if you would just be aware of your surroundings when in public and continue to wear a mask when you're in, pu uh, in public, whether you're vaccinated or either non-vaccinated, it's very important as we still struggle with this clever uh, Delta variant. Certainly, I ask that you continue to wash your hands repeatedly throughout the day and please watch your social distancing because I know it's very difficult sometimes we still still are becoming very comfortable with one another, but this virus still has a shield in between us. So I ask if we can just remain cognizant and hopefully I've been saying this for 19 months now that this too shall pass. One day we'll look back on this and just see how resilient we are as one Douglas. Uh, board of Commissioners, if there's nothing else to come before uh, this Board of Commissioners or this body, this meeting is adjourned and I'll see you all tomorrow. So so thank you. Have a good evening. Goodbye.